I have to I have to ask you this open ended question about poker theory and chess and and how that's impacted your business decision making. Well, <laughs> I, we had mentioned briefly on our call. If you asked me what really beyond these things we talked today that I think about a lot when I'm looking at things, and this is just me personally, but. Uh, I think there are certain things about poker theory or chess theory. And again, I'm just an avid amateur of both. So I don't profess any professional status. I've also been a big reader and a big studier of military history and military strategy. And as well as, believe it or not, uh, uh, I studied some quantum theory or quantum philosophy or principles in the context of understanding them around the power of possibility. So I believe for me, it's very helpful when you're looking at something or strategizing something. There are certain things about each one of those that I, walk, I, I kind of layer them over when I'm looking at something. And anytime I leave one of these off, I usually end up regretting it. Mm -hmm. Poker theory to me, well, let's start with chess. Chess, there's still a chance that someone makes a mistake, but the better they are, it's strategy, play. How mm -hmm. many moves do you play ahead? Like how far can you play on the board? Can you see the board? I tell people often, I go, try to get over the board and look down at it. See where you are. I'll relate that to military strategy in a minute. But the second thing is with that, okay, if you can – have a, strategy is everything, but it's not perfect mm. because you don't control all the variables. You control what you do. So do you need a good strategy? Yeah. Do you need to see moves ahead? And it, for a person playing where he can see two moves ahead against a person that plays that sees six moves ahead, you are at a disadvantage. So in your own skill, the further you can see ahead, the better. And ahead by meaning not you can't control the future or always predict the future, but okay, ahead means in chess is, okay, if I move here mm. and they move there, then what moves do I have from there? But what if they move here? Right. Same thing in business. If I make this move, even to a vertical or this, what are, what are the competitive th responses? What are this? What are that? What does it do for us dividing our resources? All of that. So strategy is everything, but strategy is not everything. Strategy is not everything mm. because here's where poker comes in. In poker, you can be a great player. I can be five times better than you. You get good cards, you're beating me. Mm. So the thing that poker reminds you is the element of chance. But it's really not just the element of chance. It's the, it's the element of things you don't control. They're outside. Like, look, all these people making business plans. In the last two weeks, think about it. Every company in the world. Right. Look at this. All those business plans are in the crapper right now. Except whoever's making Lysol and san hand sanitizer, they're rolling. Because they're selling a lot of Lysol and, mm -hmm. well, not Lysol. I should have not given a brand, but hand sanitizers and disinfectant. There's a lot of that being sold right now. And obviously paper towels and all that other stuff. So what I'm saying is, they, but they got, they, their sales are going to be increased because of something that they didn't even see coming. Mm -hmm. All these other people working through all this stuff, they could have had the best plans, best forecast, best thing. And that's where you can't get attached to strategy. You have to have contingencies. And that's what tells you, okay, how far do we want to get over the tips of our skis on our financial spend? Our accounts receivable, all those other things that run a business. Because if you don't have, a good financial position and you get caught upside down on variables that you can't control that mm -hmm. are just going to just, they could destroy your business because they certainly disrupt it. That affects the people, their jobs, all those other things. So I just tell you that the reason I say chess and poker is because they both teach you that you only control so much or you only can affect so much. And there are things that you have to not totally be scared of, but totally kind of prepare that there are always surprises. Right. Now, this thing that's happened recently is a big surprise for people. 
but there are always things that can come up. Like I told you in that manufacturing thing, they were already having quality issues from a bad shipment and dealing with problems with their customers. So that had already started before all this started. So this other thing on top of that, that creates a bigger problem. Well, tell us about the military strategy component. Well, military too. strategy is very, very similar to the same thing, but you have to, military strategy a lot of times is about, you know, deployment of resources. And, and there's this old thing of who has the high ground, who has the better ground. Because if you have better ground, you can defend with less people. Mm -hmm. And you can make better strides with less people. That's always been true. Mm -hmm. And so in business, I think figuring out where's the highest ground you can get to and how do we deploy our resources and how do we keep something in reserve? Because if you deploy all your resources in a military fight and you've got no reserves, you don't win it there, you're done. Mm -hmm. So, and, and in business, reserves are cash position, other options, financing terms, you know, like uh, terms on uh, 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 vendor terms, all those kinds of things that you have put together. Right. So I believe that when you look at the, and the other thing that's very important in military, stra military battle strategy is supply line. You get cut off from your, your, your supply chain, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're tagged. And that's what opposing armies try to do, cut you off from your resupply. So I always just think about that, oh, okay, in, in terms of military strategy or battle strategy, how would you approach this? And the, the, the last one was this kind of the power of possibility or things like that. And I, like even this these issues we've been talking about that have come up last 10 days and trying to approach and, you know, people try to be in the best position they can be, but you're, I, I remember I was talking to the, head of sales for one of these companies in my private portfolio right after this all this started. And but it also created that device problem, inventory problem. Yeah. And he's you could tell he was down. And I'm saying, dude, we're gonna move right into possibility right now. This is all about solving a problem that we can solve. Move your energy right now. Because the the movement of the energy and one thing you'll learn you know even the quantum physicists would tell you the, the direction that energy is moving is, is very causal. So if it's moving towards solving a problem rather than being inert mm -hmm. or moving backwards, your, their, your mathematical probability of solving that problem or at least coming up with a solution is much, much higher. So the quicker, yeah, there's a moment where you kind of go, wow. Because in that case, we had gotten a memo on Tuesday morning, last Tuesday, about that. But I'm already on, like, I'm, I'm moving by the end of that day to, okay, I think we can get around this because there's another way. And I'm counting inventory in different places and doing things and helping him work through that. But the quickest thing that I needed to move was his energy into that. And so that whole, and I would tell anyone, look, we can't, it's not being Pollyannish or, 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 you know, just wishful thinking. It's more like saying, yes. It's okay to take a moment and all that, but the quicker energy, energy affects things. And the most, if you look at the course of the power of energy, thought, word, deed. So you can't move the word and the deed until you move your thought. And generally, a lot of times your thought doesn't move until you move your feeling about it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So in that order. But if you look at the, power, the, the powerful expressions of energy, as it moves through that evolution, it becomes more powerful because that's why people say actions are more powerful than words. Mm -hmm. Because that is an expressed form of energy when you take action. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying that people talk about it as the law, you know, the law of intention or the law of attraction or all these other things that people come up with. But the bottom line is, to me, it's about possibility because at any point you have a decision point, there are several ways you can go from there. And whichever path you pick, you're going to see the things that are on that road. Mm -hmm. Let's say you and I are in Memphis, Tennessee, where I'm from. And we say we want to go to Denver. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty straight way for us to get there, a couple highways. But let's say you said to me, 
Well, yeah, I want to go to Denver from Memphis, but I don't want to go west first. Which is the direction it's in. If you and I head east, north, or south first, we're going to see some other things. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a, a different route to get there. Life's kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. You may say, oh, I want to go over here, but if you head north, you know, north, south, or the opposite direction for a while, whatever your experience is going to be is you're going to see things, meet people, have experience that are on that path. That's that whole thing about what quantum physics says is the power of possibility and choices that at the point of choice and movement, you're, you're on a path. Right. If that path, you know, feels in a good line to you, fine. But the if it, if it doesn't feel in the right line, the longer you spend on that path, the further you get away. Because right. it's just angles, right? If you right. start you start an inch away, but it's at an angle, pretty soon you're going to be a mile away. Right. Shred the, Schrodinger's, the Schrodinger's cat experiment. The cat's both dead and alive in the box um, until the moment that you open it. Then the answer is... Anyway, I, I understand. No, I, yeah. I agree. So <laughs> why don't you treat it like the solution's right. there? Yeah. Because... In reality, it's there and not there. And you're going to create that because at some point, you're going to pull open the box. Mm -hmm. So if you pull open the box after you've firmly put intentionality and action into it being there, more likely to be alive. Yeah, which which path do you want to go down? Yeah. So look, there's always a path, and as long as you feel the path is in the, the right direction, you're going to move. But the point is, I've, I watch people all the time in business and emerging tech and every business thing I'm in, sometimes hunker down and say, oh, we're just going to do this and not really, almost feel like they don't want to look at something. Hmm. Like I can't even tell you in the last couple of weeks, people in, in conversations on the phone that I've talked to, they'll say, I don't even want to look at that because they don't know what, how bad it is. So for everybody it that's- It is Schrodinger's cat. Exactly. So for everybody that's kind of freaking out right now and maybe- going into fear, fear setting and fear-based mode, how can they redirect that energy? Like, what, what's your process? Well, uh, you know, being human myself, I think I'm still processing a lot of it <laughs> right, myself. Right. Uh, but trying to be really proactive and communicate well about um, any concern or, um, you know, and get as much information as I can. The other thing is I don't want to be uh, prescriptive to other people in any way. But to me, I think, look, you have to assume, look, there may be a, a bit of a jumble here. And I'm not trying to discount or minimize anything that's going on. But you'll get through it. The cat's alive. Mm -hmm. if, using Schrodinger's cat yeah. as an example. And if you just believe that and say, okay, if that's my assumption, if that's right. my my projection that, that it's going to be there, but understanding there's a little bit to do. In some cases, you got to make personal decisions. In some cases, you got to make business decisions before I get to open the box and let that cat out and get to see that it's all cool. Then you got to work through those things. And so I don't want. I just don't want to minimize. Look, these are fears that people have, and anything that's a that's a health risk where anyone has died. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, around it where they feel that, oh, if, are there things I can influence? Are there things, choices I can make? And the people are trying to do that and sorting through that. But I would just say, if any time I've been in some difficult times and, you know, if you've lived enough decades, you've seen a few. Um, anytime you can tell yourself that it's going to be okay. You know, and not to look, you can totally cut this out if you want. But I remember one time I years ago, a number of years ago, I had to go through this an experience. It was a medical thing and not to go into a lot of detail, but I had to deal with some treatment. But I had to go in the hospital once with a very severe infection. It was uh, scary. And even the doctors felt, you know, it's like too high, way too high. And it was like a, a fever and things like that. And I had a guy come by that I trust a lot and just said, listen probably going to be in here a few days. And this fever was like just shaking my body. Like I couldn't even lay down. It would just make you bend up like you were doing crunches. Your, your body's shaking that bad. And this guy said, I want you to think three things. 
the fever will break, you'll feel better, and you're going to get out of here. I told, I said those thoughts to myself for 24 straight hours. Only three things. And guess what? Several days, I was out there. Fever broke about a day and a half. And then the first thing is you get that relief of, God, I'm not doing involuntary crunches. Mm -hmm. And the second thing you're going, okay, now got to get to the next step. But just saying that to myself really was what we were talking about saying, that's going to be that. I had no re when I was saying that to myself and started, I was absolutely terrified in fear. Mm -hmm. You know, yet there was no physical reason I was saying it. Right. My body certainly wasn't, wasn't telling me that. You know, the doctors hovering around weren't saying that. You know what I mean? They're saying, hey, we need to give you some antivirals. We need to give you some anti all these antibiotic stuff and IVs to make sure we protect you as much as we can. But we haven't identified why you have that fever yet. And they never did, by the way. It just broke. But it took a whole nother day. Mm -hmm. So... What I'm saying is at the time you said it, you had no evidence to believe, you know, their body wasn't telling you you were going to get out of it. It was your thought that was saying, start with the thought that, hey, these three things are going to happen. I can't tell you that to this day, I don't think that, you know, that person offering me that, at that kind of critical and vulnerable moment of someone I trusted just to say, was really nothing more than, but it was very descriptive and very succinct, nothing more than the power of possibility to say, you describe the end state and let your body know that's where you're going and see how that works. Mm -hmm. But don't, don't just say, well, until I have evidence, I'm not going to feel like that or, or, or even try to think like that. Because I certainly wasn't feeling like that. I had to think like that. And in order to not let that other doubt crowd in, I tell myself for like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That's a long time to say three things to yourself. And to have the faith that they're going to play out. Just to say, hey, this is a better use of this energy than just constantly focusing on this fever. So that may be too personal for people. I don't know. But the point of it was a, a very specific example of somebody boiled it down to three things for me. And then I don't think it's in, in business it's saying, I remember going into uh, the, the business in, 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 in Toronto and putting five stakes in the ground and say, within 18 months, we will be here. Here's where we are now. And mm. you're kind of saying, there's no evidence. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're drawing down your negative cash flow. You're this. You don't have a strategic footprint with the customers. You're getting paid late by all these other issues are going on. But five things, this is where this company is going. I want you all to be part of the mission. But that's where we're going. And here's the things we need to change to get there. Now, just for all of you that are committed to that, I don't know which ones of you really are committed because you're all shaking your head, yeah. Right. But here's the thing. What I'm telling you is that's where we're going. All of you can be there or none of you can be there. But that's where it's going to end up. And well, we were there in that period of time. There were a few that didn't make it. But the point is the, the people that got there felt really good. That they weren't like worried about their paychecks every every two weeks. You know? And there's something I'm certain about here is that you help people apply critical thinking. <laughs> you help people see the and and the or. You help people understand lift and load. And... Um, you communicated by helping people understand over just the communication style. Yeah, to, like I said, not. And it's, I think it's important to say there there are experiences you could have with me sometimes where I don't do all of those things because either I'm not paying it, like whatever it could be a day. But what I'm saying is, when I do them, mm -hmm. there I don't have examples where it doesn't work. 